A powerful person was born and recognized as the strongest man in the North Wilderness. But despite the strength he possessed, he was suffering from a strange illness in his body. He knew that this would affect the future of their clan, and he was determined to find a way to cure it. The story began when a cultivator of the human realm, named Lin, was being chased by monsters. She was unable to get that far when a monster caught up with her. She felt helpless when she was quickly surrounded by other monsters. The monsters were about to attack her when the members of the Bear Hug clan suddenly arrived. They were with their young master, named Wu Wang. Wu Wang used a star summoning technique called Great Ice Trap to prevent the monsters from attacking Lin. Then they took Lin to their village, and while Wu Wang was resting, he dreamed of a woman who told him that they should marry. But he did not have any idea who she was, and when she disappeared in the dream, he woke up too. It turned out that General Xiong San was waking him up because Lin was already waiting for him outside. When he faced Lin, they talked about her other two companions whom they also saved. Then Wu Wang asked her what they were doing in the North Wilderness. Lin said that they were looking for the spirit bird called White Hoffinch to take its beast core because they would use it to cure the illness of their sex senior. But since they had not gotten a beast core yet, so Wu Wang said that he could give them a beast core, but he would also ask something in return. He said that one of them must be left behind to serve him for six years. Lin decided that she would be the one to stay, so that his colleagues could go home and bring the beast core to their sex senior. Wu Wang asked Lin for more information such as her age and the sect where she belonged in the human realm. So she answered that she was a member of the Wind Moon sect and one of Master Zhuodong's disciples. After their conversation, Wu Wang took Lin to his room because he wanted to try something. He told her to touch him because he wanted to find out if the woman in the human realm was different from the women of the North Wilderness. It turned out that he would always get an electric shock every time a woman's skin touched him, and this time, his body still reacted the same way. After a few hours, he and Lin talked again and he told her the things that she was going to do. He wanted her to help him study the human realm cultivation. He believed that this was one of the ways he could think of to find a cure for his strange illness. That night, he began studying the human realm cultivation. The first thing he asked her to do was to draw the territory map of the human realm on a stone tablet. After Lin finished the drawing, he compared it to the talisman that he was holding, then he asked Lin to create a talisman. But when Lin did this, she was surprised to see Wu Wang's Qi circulation diagram. He asked Lin if she could see anything wrong with the diagram, but Lin could not answer it. Wu Wang decided to rest first, and for him to fall asleep immediately, he let Lin touch him again. Lin tried to find out the answer to Wu Wang's question, but she too fell asleep. After a few hours, Wu Wang woke her up, and when she looked at him, she was surprised that he was able to absorb spirit energy right away even though he had just started studying the human cultivation technique. But after a while, Wu Wang's body had a problem, then he thought that it might be because the human cultivation technique and star summoning technique conflicted with each other. Suddenly, his mother, named Song Shua, who was a chief senior son priest of the Starry Lord's Temple, spoke to him. She asked him why he wanted to study the technique of the human realm. He stated his reasons, but to his mother, it also seemed to show disrespect to the Starry Lord. But Wu Wang was still sure to continue his studies about it because he was worried that his illness might affect the Bear Hug clan. To protect him, his mother gave him a necklace that he would wear, so he could not be detected by the Star Lord's Temple. And once he reached the foundation establishment stage, the Starry Lord's temple could no longer hinder him. After a few hours, Wu Wang went to his grandmother and they talked about his father who was currently at the north border to face the Long Hair tribe. Other than this, they also discussed his chief's trial, and one of which was to fight the 300-year-old thorn-backed beast. But the one that his father asked General Xiong San to capture was the 1,000-year-old beast. He just thought that his father was doing this for his own good. The day had come when he needed to fight the thorn-backed beast. When Wu Wang arrived at its location, the priests and General Xiong San left him there. Just a few moments later, Lin noticed a meteor-like thing above that was falling near where they were. As Wu Wang and the thorn-backed beast were about to fight, Wu Wang's wolves as well as the thorn-backed beast suddenly stopped because of fear. As this meteor was getting closer to the ground, Wu Wang's grandmother asked herself why this was the blessing given by the Star Lady. When it fell, it immediately killed the thorn-backed beast because it turned out to be a huge monster. San Shui immediately learned about the creature sent by the Star Lady's Grace to maintain the North Wilderness policy of the clans. 
When Lin saw the monster, she immediately recognized it as Xu Huai or the man-eating beast which was recorded in the ancient books. What she knew was that the immortals had consumed them in the human realm, and he could not believe why it suddenly appeared there. After a while, it started attacking the village. Wu Wang asked General Xiong San to carry out the emergency evacuation plan 3, and then he attacked the monster. But the monster was not even affected by it, so he tried to use the freezing gale which did not work either. He noticed that the monster was on its way to the residence of his subordinates, so he immediately tried to get its attention. On the other hand, Lin saw the priests praying to the beast. She approached them because she could not understand why they were doing this. Wu Wang's grandmother came to her, and that was when she found out that for the people of the North Wilderness, the monsters falling from the sky were actually a blessing from the Star Lady. Wu Wang's grandmother begged Lin to take her near the monster's location. She told Lin that this was the only thing that could help Wu Wang, so Lin agreed. While Wu Wang was preparing his next attack, he was also thinking about the possible reasons why this monster suddenly appeared. But he did not think much about it, and just focused on the strategy of how to defeat the creature. He used the Grand Star Summoning technique called Ice Chilling Descent. When his grandmother saw this, she was happy to see her grandson's bravery. When they got close to the monster, she asked Lin to bring her down. But before Lin left, she begged Lin to convey her last message to Wu Wang. Then it was the moment when she used her very powerful technique that turned down the monster, causing it to unable to move. But this technique took the old woman's life. While Wu Wang was mourning the death of his grandmother, Lin also told him about his grandmother's last message. After hearing it, he suddenly got up and went to their village that was burned. Then his mother spoke to him for a while, so he took this opportunity to ask her what the Star Lady's grace really meant. Since he was old enough, his mother explained this to him. She told him the story of the ancient Battle of the Lords and the Heavenly Palace one where the Star Lady lived. The North Wilderness served as the Star Lady's trophy, but because she sustained many injuries from the battle, she had to sleep to recover. But she was worried that someone powerful might suddenly appear who could be a threat to her. For this reason, she developed the Seven Sun Priests to share within the Star Summoning Technique and control the entire North Wilderness. So whenever the Star Lady sensed a tribe which had the potential to unify the North Wilderness, she would send a monster to stop it immediately. She added that this also happened to the Kwafu clan 300 years ago. Wu Wang immediately understood the meaning of this blessing, and it was only intended to prevent the tribe from potentially becoming a threat to the Star Lady. After their conversation, he thought of a plan. And while they were mourning on the death of their other colleagues, he took this opportunity to inform them of the things that he wanted to say. He said that they misunderstood the grace of the Star Lady. Based on his understanding, the Star Lady did not really want to destroy the strongest tribe, but she was just testing the North Wilderness. He believed that she sent the weakest creature, but they still had not been able to defeat it, so it was a shame for the Star Lady. For his subjects and the priests to believe his words, he told them that this was the last thing his grandmother had said, so Lin nodded too. After hearing this, the priests thought carefully about what Wu Wang had said, and most of them agreed with him. When Lin confirmed that the priests' beliefs were gradually changing, Wu Wang instructed General Xiong San to bring the letter he wrote to his father. He planned to form an alliance with them, so that they could eliminate the monster for good. On the other hand, Sang Shui was currently fighting the other Sun priests because she wanted to help her family. The Star Lady suddenly joined Qing Wuan to stop her. But Sang Shui knew that in her condition, her powers would not work on her, so she let her sleep again. She told the other Sun priests that although she still respect the Star Lady, her priority was still protecting her family. When Wu Wang talked to the warriors of other tribes who agreed to form an alliance with them, he immediately began explaining his plans. When they arrived at the beast's abode, Wu Wang's father, named Han, tried to attack it in order to avenge his subordinates, but the monster just got ahead of him. The chief of the Big Wave clan also tried to attack the monster, but the same thing happened to him. When Wu Wang's group got to the top, they executed the plan to imprison the creature. Wu Wang managed to trace the part of the monster's body that had its weak points. So when he came down, he told the others to prepare everything for the attack. When he saw an opportunity, he immediately signaled to attack. After breaking the barrier, they made repetitive attacks until they were able to kill it. At night, Wu Wang was sent to the monster's location because of changes in its corpse. It turned out that Starstone, which was one of the most important minerals in the North Wilderness, grew on it. 
Wu Wang remembered what his mother had said that this creature came from the star lady's hair. He did not expect that what he told the priests about killing the beast in order to receive the grace given by the star lady would turn out to be true. However, he still told his father not to tell the others about it and leave the star stones for the meantime. To celebrate their success, they threw a party. At the same time, they also discussed about Wu Wang's illness. A priest was worried that this might be a problem for their clan in the future because Wu Wang might not have a child to whom he would pass his throne. Han approached Wu Wang and asked him to choose the woman that he would marry. Little did he know that Song Xue was behind him. His father had said a lot that Song Xue was not supposed to hear, so when he found out that she was right behind him, he was shocked and was immediately locked in the ice. But Wu Wang made a plea to his mother, so she released Han. After that, they started showing the women from different races, so Wu Wang could make a decision. Wu Wang touched them one by one, but he got the same reaction once again. As this continued, it was accompanied by the prayers of their subordinates that he would be able to endure the recurring pain. Until he noticed another woman in line, but when he asked her name, she could not answer. General Xiongsan said that it was possible that she was from the Yashiki state, which was known as a place for witches. Wu Wang told his father that he would make this woman his assistant. Tsang Xue noticed something strange about this woman, and they had no idea that she was only being controlled by a female which was not far from the village. A few hours later and while Wu Wang was writing something, the sorcerer began to execute her mission to assassinate him. But this woman failed to do it because Lin suddenly came there. Wu Wang informed Lin that their new maid would be sharing the room with her, so Lin brought her to the room. Little did they know that Wu Wang was just watching them. Before they go to bed, Lin prepared the bath for her to use. When the maid approached the bathtub, Lin kept asking herself why Wu Wang suddenly hired this woman when he did not need a maid. This was a moment when the sorcerer became worried and recalled what happened earlier, causing her to realize that Wu Wang already knew that the woman was just a puppet. Because of this, she immediately told the bandits who were with her to leave the place. While they were running away, she had her puppet attack Lin. But Wu Wang suddenly came there to stop her. It turned out that Wu Wang only used Lin to track down the person who was controlling the puppet. Then he started his attack on the mastermind and its colleagues. He managed to catch them all, and found out that the Long Hair Tribe ordered them to do it. Then he used the name of his mother who would serve as the one who discovered the assassination attempt of the Long Hair Tribe. He wanted to make other clans believe in him and attack the Long Hair Tribe. Then he instructed Lin to get ready because they would go to the market. While they were on their way, Wu Wang dreamed of the woman again. This time, he saw her face clearly. But she disappeared once again, and he woke up from his sleep. When they arrived near the market, Wu Wang disguised himself to make sure that no one would recognize him. He decided to go there alone because he did not want anyone to bother him. The first building he visited was a tavern, and he asked if there was a place of entertainment in the area. But according to the person whom he talked to, the place was only filled with sellers. Because of this, he just ordered something to eat and drink. After a while, he noticed a group of people below, and he saw a woman with a mark on the forehead which was similar to the woman in his dream. The woman's group also entered the tavern, and he heard one of them calling one of their colleagues as Master Zwodong. This name became familiar to him, and when they talked about the Bear Hug clan, he remembered that this was Lin's master. He also found out that they were from the human realm, and that some of them were undergoing trial. The other disciples were even thinking that he mistreated Lin. One of their companions, named Jima, came there, but the other disciples seemed to be avoiding him. He sat in front of Wu Wang, and they talked using telepathy. He was looking for beautiful girls, but he did not want his colleagues to know. After Jima introduced himself to Wu Wang, he told Jima that his name was Howdy and was from the Big Wave Clan. Ji Ma wanted Wu Wang to take him to the Big Wave Clan, but Wu Wang refused and said that he would not be able to help him find beautiful girls there. This was overheard by Ji Ma's colleagues. They got annoyed at Ji Ma and decided to leave the tavern, but they left Ji Ma. When they were on their way home, he asked Lin about what she think on his treatment, and she said that it was fine. He also said that he had a plan to go to the human realm, so she volunteered to be his guide. The next day, Master Zhuodong arrived at the Bear Hug Clan to check on Lin and also talk to Wu Wang about their purpose in coming to the area. When Master Zhuodong saw Lin, he did not immediately recognize her because of few changes on her. Lin learned that Master Zhuodong planned to take her back to the human realm if Wu Wang was mistreating her. 
So Lin clarified to her master that Wu Wang was treating her well. Suddenly, Wang Lin spoke and accused Wu Wang of using a love potion on Lin. He also said something not nice to the Bear Hug Clan people which heard by the soldiers nearby. Ji Ma joined the conversation and silenced Wang Lin saying that he seemed had no idea on what he was talking about. Then Ji Ma approached Lin and asked her to show the way to Wu Wang. Wu Wang just looked at the color of his guests, and he could easily guess the character of each one of them. When they entered, Wu Wang immediately noticed something strange about the woman whose face was covered. While Ji Ma started looking for beautiful women. When Wu Wang asked them why they came, Ji Ma replied that they wanted to reconcile with the Bear Hug Clan. Wu Wang suddenly laughed and repeated what Ji Ma had told him yesterday, so Ji Ma found out that Wu Wang was the one he talked to at the tavern the other day. When they were given something to drink, Ji Ma introduced Miss Ling who was from the Heavenly Fairy sect and the one leading their current mission. Ji Ma informed him of the possibility that there might be another war between the human realm and the heavenly palace in the future, but they lacked the equipment which the Bear Hug Clan was creating. And they wanted to get some of these items, but when Wu Wang found out what they could offer in exchange, he did not immediately agree. Apart from this, the Star Lady was said to be on guard because they were in the North Wilderness, and he needed to ask the opinion of the entire clan about it. He told them that he could decide on this, but they also needed to show their senior who was protecting them. It turned out that Wu Wang could feel its presence for a while, so Ji Ma had decided to summon Madame Yin. Their negotiations ended, but Wu Wang did not accept the settlement offer that Ji Ma was asking because he wanted them to focus on the trial first. While he would also focus on establishing the North Wilderness Mineral Consortium. A few hours later and while General Xiong San was about to return to his room, someone suddenly fell behind him. It turned out to be Ji Ma who had a big wound on his chest. After the high priest applied the initial remedy, Wu Wang spoke to him to find out what really happened. According to Ji Ma, after they left the Bear Hug Clan, they went straight to the center of the North Wilderness. They encountered a strong monster, and even though they helped each other in the fight, they still had a hard time defeating it. Until Miss Ling was caught, so Madame Yin also took action to save her. Ji Ma and Wang Lin fought the beast to let Madame Yin and Miss Ling have a chance to escape. As soon as Wang Lin was hurt, the beast also targeted Ji Ma. But he was able to use one of his attacks, and had a chance to escape. He was worried about his other colleagues who were injured, but Wu Wang told him to rest first. A few minutes later, Ji Ma decided to leave, but he was seen by Wu Wang. Then Wu Wang told him that he decided to help him save his other companions. They immediately left, and when they saw Miss Ling's location through the crystal ball, Wu Wang instructed Ji Ma to go there, while he and General Xiong San would scout the area first. He had a hunch that something strange was going on around the area, so he planned to watch over Ji Ma for the meantime. When Ji Ma arrived at Miss Ling's location, he was surprised that he did not face any problems. Apart from this, there was also no trace of a fierce battle that happened earlier. He thought that Madame Yin might have made the beast follow her, and left Miss Ling behind. When he was about to approach Miss Ling, he saw Madame Yin with Wang Lin. He immediately approached them, and Madame Yin said that she only saw Wang Lin. When they were about to approach Miss Ling, they were surprised to see Wu Wang beside her. General Xiong San suddenly attacked, but Madame Yin blocked it, then General Xiong San quickly grabbed Ji Ma. That was the moment when Wu Wang told Ji Ma his suspicion that Madame Yin was planning something. She wanted to help Wang Lin marry a woman who was a member of the Heavenly Fairy sect because it would greatly help Wang Lin's cultivation. This would definitely happen if Wang Lin end up defeating the monster and save Miss Ling. But Madame Yin was trying to deny Wu Wang's allegations. Wu Wang used a star summoning technique to look at Wang Lin's soul. Because of this, Madame Yin was forced to come up with a way to get the monster's attention. So Wu Wang tasked General Xiong San to deal with this monster. Then he asked for strong power from his mother. As Madame Yin was about to attack, she was preceded by an attack from Song Shui. Madame Yin was about to get up, but her divine soul was severely damaged. Wu Wang approached Miss Ling to heal her wound and let Ji Ma took care of Madame Yin. Meanwhile, the battle between General Xiong San and the monster had begun. At first, the monster could still move faster and injure the general. But it was not long before General Xiong San read its movements, causing him to capture the beast. When Ji Ma chased Madame Yin, they immediately exchanged attacks. After a few moments, Wang Lin's wounds began to heal and he got up. 
He still could not believe that Wu Wang found out about the strange content of his soul. He wanted to take back Miss Ling, so he decided to transform into a monster. Before he started his attack, he was about to drink some blood, but Wu Wang acted quickly to stop it. Wu Wang repeatedly attacked him, so that Wang Lin could not drink it until the blood finally fell to the ground. Because of the effect of this blood, the sinful beast felt it. When Wang Lin attacked, Wu Wang released many crystal spheres, and he used this to attack Wang Lin. Due to its great strength, Wang Lin was immediately defeated, and Ji Ma came there while carrying Madame Yin. When Miss Ling woke up, General Xiong San also came who had just defeated the monster. After they returned to the Bear Hug Clan, Miss Ling thanked Wu Wang for saving her and immediately left. Ji Ma had also decided to return to the human realm to inform their sect of the trial situation. A few hours later after Ji Ma left, Wu Wang decided to go to the human realm with Lin and Master Zhuodong and find the true scriptures which he believed would help their tribe. General Xiong San was worried about Wu Wang, so he showed him the barrier he had created in case a woman approached him. Han was sad about his son's departure, but he still supported him as long as he came back. He also gave him a sword and said that most people in the human realm were using swords. While they were on their way, Ji Ma was congratulated by his master, named Su Mu, for his accomplishments. It was also their mission to find the spy of the Ten Evil Hall, so Su Mu expected that it was inevitable that someone would die among them. They had also discussed about Wu Wang and Su Mu was also amazed by him. He believed that no one from the North Wilderness could match Wu Wang's strength. He also knew that Wu Wang's mother was just watching, and she would not just show up easily. While Wu Wang was watching Ji Ma and Su Mu, his mother suddenly spoke to him. She asked him again if he was sure about going to the human realm. Although he knew that what he would do was not easy, he still wanted to explore the human realm. The next morning, they passed by a market and stopped there for a while, so the other passengers could purchase some goods. Wu Wang had met an old man in the area, and he immediately thought that this old man might be a member of the Four Seas House. The old man suddenly blocked him and offered to read Wu Wang's fortune. But Wu Wang did not agree because for him, the old man was just a beginner. Instead, he gave the old man some money, so he could buy clothes for him to look like a professional. Wu Wang added that he alone would decide his fate and no one else could tell him. This old man liked what Wu Wang had said, so he followed him. When he entered Wu Wang's room, he showed him the teleportation, and Wu Wang was amazed by this. It turned out that the old man also knew the true identity of Wu Wang because of his disciple, named Dr. Yuan, who previously went to the North Wilderness and said that he met the chief of the Bear Hug Clan. So after learning about Wu Wang's illness, Dr. Yuan seemed to be bothered when he returned to the human realm. This man did not expect that he and Wu Wang would meet there because it turned out that he also had a plan to find Wu Wang. He decided to bring Wu Wang with him to begin the treatment of his strange illness. After they informed Lin, she tried to talk to Wu Wang, but the old man made her sleep. Then they left using teleportation, and Wu Wang was once again amazed by this technique. While they were walking, it was here that the old man told him his name, and it was Lian Shan. Wu Wang even thought that Lian Shan was the emperor of mankind, who was also known as the legendary Shinong. After hearing this, Lian Shan also admitted that he was also known as Shinong, causing Wu Wang to be shocked. When they arrived at Shinong's house, he informed Wu Wang that his strange illness came from the ancient battle of the immortals. Although it was not easy to cure, he still had a technique for it, but Wu Wang needed to reach his ninth level. This technique also had something to do with the future of the human realm, because if Wu Wang reached the highest level, he would be the next emperor of mankind. At the beginning of his cultivation for this technique, Wu Wang was given that emperor's decree. This thing would give him the tests, and he only had one month to complete them. His first task was to cut down many trees without using the star summoning technique or any magical power. After he gathered the tree logs, he was told to swallow a pill that gave him strength. For his second test, he was asked to build a house using the wood he collected. He started right away, and half a month later, he was able to finish the house. In his third test, he was made a stream that would pass near the house he built. He also did it successfully, and after a month, he was given the fourth test which was also the last one. It was to take all the things in Master Shinong's residence and bring them to the house he made. He immediately carried it out, and when he was done, he finally got the approval of that emperor's decree. But one day, he found a box and saw many emperor's decree in it. That was when he realized that Master Shinong just made him a carpenter for its new house. 
That same time, Master Shinnong arrived, and in Wu Wang's anger, he chased after him. The next day, Wu Wang began the training for the real technique. He underwent different types of training. When he was given time to rest, they also discussed the duties of an emperor of mankind. Master Shinnong said that the reason why the emperor of mankind must be so strong was to catch the pressure of the immortals in the human realm. Apart from this, they had also discussed the Emperor of Heaven, named Emperor Kun, and its disciple, the Great Lord of Life, who controlled the lifespans of all creatures. Wu Wang asked how long he would stay there, and Master Shinnong said that it was until he reached the core condensation stage, and the third level of the technique. Through this, the Emperor's decree would enter him to accompany his divine soul. Master Shinnong also said that he would send him to a country in the West Wilderness, called Women's Country. There was a rebellion going on there, and if he wanted to help, he could use the star summoning technique. After some time, Master Shinnong summoned his disciples. Because of his lifespan, they had conducted a trial with the new generations but they still failed to find someone with potential. Master Shinnong just said that he had thought of a solution about his lifespan, and he also asked them to stop conducting a trial. After the meeting, Master Shinnong and Wu Wang talked. He warned Wuang to be careful of the Ten Evil Sect in the Four Seas House. The Ten Evil Sect worshipped the Ten Evil Immortals, and recently, they had been showing signs to enter the major sects of the human realm. When Master Shinnong mentioned that it was difficult to detect the abnormality in the soul of people in the human realm, Wuang mentioned what he did to Wang Lin in order to know the content of his soul. After hearing this, Master Shinnong asked him to take care of the Ten Evil Sect. As for the Four Seas House, Master Shinnong said that he was the one who founded it before, and one of his disciples was the current chief of the group. He trusted her, but because of aiming for power, that person had been corrupted. Wu Wang was worried because he knew that he would have a hard time fighting the strong ones in the human realm, so Master Shinnong gave him two rings that would help him. He also started the ritual to send Wu Wang to the women's country. When he got there, he fell into a bathtub. But there was a woman there, and she immediately attacked him, luckily, he was able to defend himself quickly. He introduced himself to this woman, and was about to try to explain, but she rushed to attack him again. But she was mesmerized by his stance that she stopped the attack. He took this opportunity to find out if he was in women's country. The woman confirmed this and introduced herself to him as General Fengi. When he got out of the bathhouse, there were guards prepared to stop him outside. General Fengi came out too to stop her guards. To be able to get out of there, Wu Wang challenged General Fengi. But he only lost in the fight because he did not use his star summoning technique. General Fengi decided to take him to the queen, so he exposed his true identity and where he really came from. When the general heard this, he was considered a divine envoy from the North Wilderness. The next morning while they were heading to the royal palace, Wu Wang found out that the entire women's country was surrounded by a protective barrier, so no one could get out. He also noticed large sculptures that looked like monsters, and when he used his power to look at them closely, he saw that they were alive. When they entered the royal palace, they were met by a soldier because there was a man who had been arrested. It turned out to be Jima, and when he saw Wu Wang, he immediately asked for help. They were greeted by the Prime Minister, and Miss Ling was also with her. Miss Ling abandoned Ji Ma because of the sins he committed, but Ji Ma insisted that he was not the one who did it to the victims. When Wu Wang heard this, he tried to find out who had caught Ji Ma. When he learned that it was just an ordinary soldier who captured a primordial infant stage cultivator like Ji Ma, he became suspicious about it. So he told the Prime Minister about the possibility that someone else had sealed Ji Ma's golden core, causing him to unable to move. Because of this, the Prime Minister sent Jima for a thorough investigation, but General Fengi immediately beat him. In the evening, the Prime Minister begged Wu Wang to help her in the investigation. Wu Wang agreed to it, and his first request to Jima was to tell him what happened the night of the incident. After Jima narrated it all, Wu Wang spoke to the victims. But all of them were not sure if Jima was the man who did those things to them. After hearing their stories, Wu Wang told the Prime Minister about the possibility that another man might have entered the women's country. The Prime Minister immediately ordered the soldiers to find this man. When Ji Ma was released, he immediately challenged General Fengi to a fight. He wanted to get back the honor he lost after he was beaten by her earlier. Wu Wang tried to warn Ji Ma, but he did not listen. He also wondered who would want to frame up Ji Ma. 
He spoke to Miss Ling using telepathy because he noticed that the soldier behind her looked suspicious. When Miss Ling took off this soldier's helmet, the Prime Minister was surprised because it turned out to be the Queen, named Jiai. She told them to head to the palace the next day so that they could talk. After some time, Wu Wang helped Ji Ma with his wounds because General Fengi beat him again. In order for Ji Ma to avoid danger, Wu Wang gave him advice on how to know if someone was planning something bad to him. Just a few minutes after Wu Wang left, a woman entered Ji Ma's room. It turned out to be the Prime Minister, and Ji Ma could not believe on what he was seeing because he felt like he was just dreaming. But while she was seducing him, Ji Ma remembered the advice given by Wu Wang, so he rejected her offer and sent her out of the room. Wu Wang turned out to be watching them, but someone suddenly visited him too. He was surprised because his guest was the Queen, who said that she could not sleep since they met at the Prime Minister's mansion. So Wu Wang had a conversation with her, and the Queen also took the opportunity to ask him about the differences of the women outside and the women in their country. Miss Ling suddenly came in the room too because she wanted to talk to Wu Wang. Because of this, Wu Wang quickly hid the Queen. Miss Ling entered and thanked him again for saving her in the North Wilderness. Then she also asked what was the best way for them to track down the person who wanted to frame up Ji Ma. Before Wu Wang could answer, the Prime Minister arrived, so Miss Ling immediately hid. She also intended to seduce Wu Wang, but someone else came there. When the Prime Minister was able to hide, his mother suddenly warned Wu Wang that he quickly moved back. It turned out to be Gan Fan who was a warrior sacrifice, and he was the culprit in framing Ji Ma in the previous incident. He wanted to kill Wu Wang because he helped Ji Ma earlier. But his attack on Wu Wang did not work, and that was when he was attacked by Miss Ling and the others. He was about to try to run away, but he just bumped into the barrier. When the queen attacked, Gan Fan could not avoid it because it was too fast. In his situation, he thought of capturing the weakest of all to be his hostage, and he chose Wu Wang. But he was surprised when Wu Wang used a star summoning technique, causing him to be defeated easily. When Gan Fan regained consciousness, Wu Wang asked him who sent him there. But he suddenly blew himself up, so the queen immediately knew that Gan Fan was a warrior sacrifice. After they said goodbye and left, Wu Wang thought that the prime minister might not be the one to start the rebellion. The next morning, they headed to the queen's palace. While they were on the trip, Ji Ma tried to invite Wu Wang to join the Four Seas house. Because of this, Wu Wang remembered Master Shinong's warning about the Four Seas house. So he asked Ji Ma what he would gain if he joined it. Ji Ma said that it was possible for him to get that Emperor's Decree. It was here that he realized how important that Emperor's Decree was, so he thought that he might be special for Master Shinong. Although he thanked Ji Ma for recognizing his talent, he still refused the offer. When they arrived at the palace, they saw the pregnancy pool. This was what the women use if they wanted to have a child. The Prime Minister greeted them, and when they were about to enter the palace, it was here that Wu Wang felt something strange. The Prime Minister noticed his reaction, so she told him that what he felt was the guardian beast of the women's country. When they met the Queen, she immediately invited Wu Wang to show him her resting place. Because of this, the others followed them too to look at it as well. When they arrived there, Wu Wang had a conversation with the Queen about their respective duties in their area. While the two of them were having conversation, Ji Ma also asked General Fengi when they would start because he was the one who sent the letter to the Four Seas house to ask for help. General Fengi once again remembered what she and Jia Yi used to do when they were children. Then he told Ji Ma that they would start in the evening. A few minutes later, while Ji Ma and Miss Ling were playing, they talked about Wu Wang. Ji Ma noticed that Miss Ling was falling for Wu Wang, so he thought of a way to get to know Wu Wang better. They planned to make him drunk, so they also invited the Prime Minister and the Queen. After Ji Ma gave Wu Wang a drink, each of the guests showed the wine that they brought, but Wu Wang also showed the big container of his wine. Wu Wang made them drink, and after a few hours, he was the only one left awake. He noticed that there was something strange about the wine he drank earlier, so he quickly created a barrier to protect himself before falling asleep. Then Ji Ma got up who was just pretending to be asleep, and after apologizing to Wu Wang, he also woke up Miss Ling and General Fengi. They did not know that Wu Wang was already awake, so he found out that General Fengi was the one who planned the rebellion. A few years ago, General Fengi remembered the time when she witnessed how a child was fed to a divine beast. She was so scared that she ran away, but the soldiers and the prime minister heard her and caught her. 
The Prime Minister was about to kill her when Jiayi arrived and asked the Prime Minister to spare her life and let Fengi serve as her personal bodyguard. This was the reason why they carried out a rebellion to stop this ritual of the women's country. When they entered the basement where the ritual would be performed, General Fengi showed the children. Then she took them deep into the basement so that they would find out why there were so many children there. Meanwhile, Wu Wang went to the pregnancy pool to investigate it carefully. But when he discovered something, the soldiers suddenly came there. Because of this, he was forced to use the star summoning technique, called Ice Seal. When General Fengi and the others reached the end of the basement, they were surprised to see the divine beast. General Fengi said that this was the guardian of deity that protects them, but in exchange, they needed to feed it with children's lives. Using the pregnancy pool, children were secretly created to be used as sacrifice. General Fengi would make sure that this ritual would stop. They started to attack the divine beast, but due to its great size and strength, it was not even affected by their attacks. When Jima attacked, he was able to bring the beast down, and then it was quickly followed by Miss Ling's attack. But it still did not work so the divine beast was able to emit a very strong aura. When General Fengi attacked, this was the moment when Wu Wang came and stopped the beast. Then he attacked its legs, so that it could not move. Miss Ling thought of using the unique skill of the Heavenly Fairy Sect, so that she could speed up Wu Wang's movement even more. Because of this, Wu Wang was able to crush the divine beast. When the divine beast tried to retaliate, Wu Wang quickly used the Great Ice Trap. General Fengi was about to eliminate the divine beast, but Wu Wang stopped her. Wu Wang wanted General Fengi to tell him what would happen if the divine beast died. But General Fengi could not say it, so Wu Wang decided to tell them. He revealed that this monster was the core of the women's country protective formation. So if the beast die, the protective formation would also be lost. Wu Wang also told them of what he discovered about the 108 statues that were outside the women country's border. They also contained ferocious monsters, and if his suspicion was correct, they would come back to life after the barrier was gone to destroy the women's country. After all she heard, General Fengi said that he was ready to face these monsters. But Wu Wang warned her, and he said that even though they were one of the biggest clans in the North Wilderness, their clan was almost wiped out just because of a single monster. General Fengi recalled the past when Jiayi asked her for help because she is afraid of becoming a monster. The Prime Minister came there and called the Divine Beast as His Majesty, so Wu Wang was surprised when he heard this. General Fengi suddenly attacked the Divine Beast, and it was here that Wu Wang remembered what Jiayi told him about her mother. When General Fengi defeated the Divine Beast, it gradually disappeared and then a crown fell from it. General Fengi was about to destroy it, but it released a strong force which was why it got out of there, and they immediately followed it. It went to the pregnancy pool, and when Wu Wang looked at the statues, they slowly came to life. When Jima touched it, it temporarily stopped spinning. Wu Wang saw General Fengi carrying the queen, so he instructed Jima to find a way to stop the crown from rotating. Then he and Miss Ling followed General Fengi to save the queen. Jima thought of calling his master to ask for help from him. Sumu did not want to help because they were undergoing a trial, but Jima had no choice, so he decided to withdraw from the trial. For this reason, Sumu was forced to help Jima, and he also said that he was leaving the Four Seas house. While he was holding the crown, Jima left to follow Wu Wang and the rest. They successfully recovered the queen from General Fengi and captured her. They all went to the pregnancy pool, and it was here that Jiai decided to accept the crown to save the women's country. As she was getting closer to the crown, Wu Wang thought again why Master Shinnong said that he could use the star summoning technique if he wanted to help the women's country. After a few moments, he came up with another way, and it was the belief collecting. While Sumu was still trying to stop the crown, Wu Wang explained how to do it. He believed that this technique would definitely work because of Jiayi's divine power. Since Jiayi had full trust in Wu Wang, she agreed to perform this technique. Before they started, they saw the sudden aging of General Fengi. When Jiayi did this, Wu Wang also told the others what they should do next. They also created a statue to be worshipped by the women's country. Then they also find a way to make them believe that anyone who believed in Jiayi would receive grace. With this, it was certain that many people would believe in Jiayi. Master Shinnon was amazed after learning what Wu Wang did in the women's country. He was currently looking for something, and he found out that it was located in Kunlun Mountain. One day, Wu Wang started to feel Jiayi inside the statue. 
He successfully did it, and he saw Jiayi who was just in the garden. They talked for a while and when their conversation was over, he immediately informed the others of this good news. In the afternoon, Wu Wang and Su Mu talked, and he was also amazed at what Wu Wang had done. It was not long when Su Mu felt that he had a visitor from the Four Seas house. So after he and Wu Wang talked, he went to them. They asked him why Ji Ma and Miss Ling withdrew from the trial. He answered them that the two could not handle the pressure of the trial. He added that if the Four Seas house still had doubts about this, they could talk to Ji Ma's family. Then they also discussed the women's country because the Four Seas house found out that the belief collecting was successful. The Four Seas house wanted to know the method used because when it was tried before in the human realm, they did not succeed. So they met Sumu to ask him for help and to invite Wu Wang to the Four Seas house. But Sumo only warned them of what they were planning because apart from the fact that the people from the North Wilderness should not be taken lightly, Wu Wang's mother was also watching. He said that if they still wanted to invite Wu Wang, that was up to them, but he could not help them. In the evening, Wu Wang spoke to Ji Ma and Miss Ling to give them his gifts. He said that he would only stay there for three days because he also had to leave. But he just lied to them because he was leaving that same night. He said goodbye to Jiayi first, so Jiayi insisted on talking to him. He also said that he intended to go to the great wilderness to find the true scriptures that will save his people. When he got out of the barrier, Master Shinnong spoke to him using telepathy. But suddenly, the people from the Four Seas house that Sumu talked to earlier appeared to him. They invited him to come with them to the human realm and said that the Four Seas house wanted to talk to him. They had no idea that he was doing something, so that Master Shinnong could hear their conversation. When he refused their offer, the group used force on him. But Master Shinnong was already there and immediately attacked the man, and then the woman as well. Master Shinnong was very angry at the Four Seas house because they were becoming a bad example, and to make it worse, they were making it look like he was allowing them on what they were doing. To calm Master Shinnong, Wu Wang gave him a lollipop. After that, Master Shinnong offered Wu Wang to come with him to Kunlun Mountain. After Wu Wang heard this, he remembered the Queen Mother of the West. He did not want to come there, but he could not refuse Master Shinnong. Before they continue, they ate first, and Master Shinnong mentioned that the belief collecting technique had been tried before in the human realm. Then he also told him the story of how the human realm was founded. After Emperor Kun divided the realm into nine wildernesses, the fire deity controlled the south wilderness. Everyone who opposed him was mercilessly eliminated, until one day, an old man suddenly came there. The two of them fought and the old man managed to defeat the fire deity. Then he got the power of the fire deity, and became known by the name Sui Rin. But because of the anger of the heavenly emperor, he sent an army to fight Sui Rin. With the help of other people who had also acquired the power of fire, they were able to defeat the army sent by the heavenly emperor, causing them to also conquer the central mountain. In this situation, they forced the Heavenly Emperor into a negotiation. This was the way Siurin thought to keep things in order because he also knew that his time was running out. After talking with Master Shinnong, they decided to head to Kunlun Mountain. When they arrived at the legendary Kunlun Sanctuary, Wu Wang felt a very strong aura. But when Master Shinnong touched him, it suddenly disappeared. Suddenly, the creatures named Lu Wu, Ying Zhao, Kaming Beast, and Chang Ching came there. Since they could no longer avoid fighting against them, Master Shinnong decided to send Wu Wang to an island. Wu Wang fell on the island and saw a bird that repeatedly uttered the word Jin Wei. When he got up, this bird handed him a fruit that gave him energy. Then the bird came to him again, and it changed its form. It turned out to be a person, so Wu Wang was surprised that he did not fell asleep after she made a contact with him. He begged her again to turn into a bird and land on his arms. Since he had not fallen asleep yet, he asked her to transform into human, and he was surprised that there was no effect on him. It was only here that he remembered the name Jingwei. Then he found out that she was Master Shinnong's daughter, and it was here that he realized that he was not affected because she was just a spiritual body. He remembered what Master Shinnong had told him, and thought that he might have planned it all, so that he could become his son-in-law. However, he was still very happy because he could at last touch a woman. This is the end of the last episode of The Little Master's Better Life. I hope you like it and give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel so you won't miss new uploaded videos. Thank you for watching.